Hello everyone. Let's look at using take. The reason why I'm doing that is because I've been working on a linked list example recently. This is the code for the linked list. And believe it or not, if you spend two weeks of your life <laughs> practicing this every day, you eventually get the hang of it. Um, yeah, it's it's probably the, the most advanced example in, or one of the most ex advanced examples in the book, Rust Crash Course, which I've mentioned a couple of times. Abhishek Kumar is the author. The linked list example, page 197. So you've got a node, you've got a linked list. And then there's the impl for the linked list, which is using a generic type. And next is an option because you may or may not have next. If you've learned, for instance, about blockchain, you might actually think of this as previous rather than next. I don't know which is the correct way of explaining it. In my head I'm thinking previous because it's almost like a stack. So uh, next here, in my head I interpret this as previous, but that's just me. So the linked list has got a head option of a head because when you create the linked list, it will just be an empty link list so it won't have any nodes that's why it's an option could be some could be none so again you may well have read or heard that rust is not well suited to applications of linked lists i don't want to comment on that i don't know enough but all i can say is this is a brilliant example for <laughs> stretching your brain <laughs> bending your brain a bit because we've got new which is just linked list and head is none so that's pretty straightforward you're creating the uh, effectively creating an instance of a linked list with nothing in it so this is where it gets more interesting push so we want to add some data data is the field within the node so we're going to pass in some data to our push function which is part of our linked list implementation so there's no implementation for the node the node basically just contains some some values the linked list does all the good stuff so the way i do this and remember it is i just basically come in and create a box a new box which contains the node and the node is the struct which contains data and it contains next, which is I've already mentioned in my head. I translate to, that to previous. I find previous just makes more sense. Pick or choose whichever you find more intuitive. This is the really interesting bit, I believe. So I'd not really used take that much before. What we're doing here is we're creating a new node, and for instance, if it was the, if we were naming them, so the first node would be node one, the second node would have some data in, say the number two. And what we're doing here is we're actually doing self dot head dot take. So of the current state of the linked list, we then take the head, and the head is actually it is. The head is the key of the linked list. So it's actually, the head here is actually a node. So we're taking the node. Now, this is really good practice for using take. It's great practice for using match with options. And it's just generally good practice for using options and also for using, <laughs> for using, um, structs within other structs so the, the code it, it, it's an example so it, it works and um, i've not written this from scratch but let's look at what actually i'm talking about here so if we go to the rust docs and we get an option i think option is probably something i need to get my head around a little bit more so that's what i'm planning on doing here we've got replace and take and oh, that was take if 
So let's just look at take. Main function. So x equals sum two. So it could be sum or it could be none. But in this case, x has a value, so it is sum two. Y equals x dot take. So take actually grabs this, assigns it to y, and then it's actually gone. It's gone from x. Because it was an option, when you take that, you end up with none. Rust doesn't have any concept of null or nothing. So that's quite good. You can take something. You can actually, so it's a bit like cut. I think of it as like a cut and paste. <laughs> well, I don't know whether that's wise or not, but maybe someone can advise. So then we go down here and we've got an option U32 equals none. So if we take, again, it's doing the same thing here. So it's taking X and X is none. So um, I don't know if it actually does take it if it, does it actually take it if it is none? Yeah, takes the value out of the option, leaving none in its place. So it's almost sort of shadowing itself there because because it's already none. When you take take none from none, you still have none. It's, it's more apparent here because you're taking this, so you're cutting it. When you cut it, Think of if you were using Photoshop, you'd cut it and you'd be like left with a big, big empty space. So that's what you've got here. The only reason these two statements work is because you've got that one there. We go to run it. Let's remove actual fact. Sum to take. So these assert statements only work because of both of these lines here. For instance, if you didn't have that, get the error. So, um, these asserts, are, they're both dependent on having both of these lines present. So there we go, that's, that's using take. Back to this. Um, what else have I learned? I've also learned to, that you don't, <laughs> when you assign a name to something within your match arm, make it, make it useful. So, so many times I've just called it I've done, so here we've got val, and then we're matching val. So val here and val there, they link these two. But within this match, you've got the match arms of some and none. So previously, I'm, when I first started learning, I might have just have called this x. <laughs> or I might have just have called it val, which really is not over helpful. And when you when you've got it this well sort of named, so you don't need comments. So it's very obvious that node is a node. I think that's uh, I don't think that's up for argument. Hopefully, and um, yeah, that's 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 what I've learned so far. But I think it's called underfitting and overfitting i think what i need to do next is do some more examples of this and because i think at the moment i'm, I'm overfitting i can remember this example from the top of my head and it kind of makes sense uh but i think if i was faced with a, a different example in a different book it, i'd blow a fuse and then i'd have to um <laughs> get back to the drawing board so i think the secret is to learn several examples and then you you don't get stuck if you ever have to do and do some code where it's not quite like the example that you first learned. It's a bit like learning to drive a car on, on familiar roads and then you end up on a different road and obviously the, the principles are the same, but, <laughs> but you'd, you'd panic or you might panic 
if something uh, unexpected was there or something looked different. So but head dot take. So we've got head dot take here. Head self dot head dot take there. And this is the the nice one. You've got node dot next dot take. And if you notice within this match arm, you've got the curly braces, and it's actually doing something here with the semicolon at the end. So that's modifying node.next.take is modifying the value of the head. That's why this is mutable. And all we're doing here, this is optional really, it's <laughs> no pun intended, but it is optional because you're returning the option. And even that's optional because you, you wouldn't have to. The only reason when you pop well, this this function is doing pop, it's just so that you can pass back what you've just popped off. Off the linked list. Mm -hmm.